ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट विद वेब कंपोनेंट्स फर्स्ट ओके सो व्हाट आर डेकोरेटर्स हियर देयर डेकोरेटर्स देयर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डेकोरेटर्स अवेलेबल नेमली ट्रैक वाई एंड एपीआई ट्रैक डेकोरेटर इज ए ट्रैक डेकोरेटर इज ए प्राइवेट डेकोरेटर व्हिच इज यूज्ड इन द कंपोनेंट इटसेल्फ एपी डेकोरेटर is used uh, to transfer data from one component to another component and white decorator is used uh, to fetch the data from sales uh, from the classes okay so uh, in how many ways we can get the data from our apex controllers in web components uh, actually in multiple ways we are mm -hmm. a by using the wire decorator we are able to fetch the data by by, by using the imperative method we are able to uh, fetch the data mm -hmm. and uh, without hitting the database uh, we are able to fetch the data by using the lds lightning data services yeah okay. the, the, these are the possible methods okay and how does imperative call is different from this wire call by use uh, actually when at the time of uh, displaying the uh, loading the data or displaying the data initially we will use wire decorator because uh, by default it will calls when the component loads and uh, coming to imperative uh, we have to particularly we have to do uh, some action at the time only imperative will gets called and coming to imperative their uh, promises will be there then and catch mm -hmm. uh, like uh, try and catch method if you compare to sales for sapex mm -hmm. uh, try uh, in then method we if you receive the data the data will be uh, completely included in then method as a result and uh, if you receive any error uh, we will we will catch the error in the catch method and uh, there are no there is no promises uh, if we look into the wire method okay but we will receive data and error okay so whenever uh, this component loads it will going to call our wire method right so in uh, at yes. this time we were be able to get the results from the apex controller like suppose yes, your, we are able to. your constructor is also there in your component okay and connected callback is also there so will you will going to get data before this connected callback or after the connected callback from the apex controller i think before connected callback only the wire method gets executed okay so yes it will going to execute but the result from the apex controller it will going to show us after the connected callback okay so it will going to uh, execute multiple times okay first time when the component loads but this time we will not be able to get the result from apex okay so once and connected callback were executed then we will see the uh, wire will again execute and show us the result from the component controllers okay okay so can you explain me this life cycle loop in web components yeah uh, in life cycle loop different stages are there uh, initially there is constructor constructor mm -hmm. constructor uh, their uh, mounting phase unmounting phase disconnected uh, disconnected call and error, error phase these are the phases available in life cycle hooks uh, in mounting phase there are uh, different stages available constructor connected call back uh, rendered call back mm, these are the uh, stages available and uh, constructor uh, constructor connected call back and uh, these uh, will go from child to parent mm -hmm. and the rendered call back will will moves from child to parent Okay. So, what is the use of this render callback? When we should use render callback in our components? Actually, I heard that uh, it was too dangerous uh, uh, when at the time of uh, if we don't use properly because it will call again and again. Yeah. Uh, the rendered callback will be useful uh, when if you have any child, if you want to display any day uh, from child, I think it will be useful. so once the uh, so this is basically we used when we want to perform any logic once the component has finishes rendering phase right but yes it executes multiple times also so we have to be very careful while using this about the render callback function in the life cycle hooks okay 
so as we know this function execute after the rendering phase of the component okay so what do you mean by this uh, uh, rendering of the component okay you can check out the previous video where i have explained this statement okay so whenever you want to make sure that your logic should execute after completing the rendering phase okay after the component renders so in such cases you can execute your logic in this render callback okay so like suppose there is a list and there is a button on the component and on click of this button you want to change the background of this button okay but you want to make sure that this should be done after the rendering phase okay so you can perform this in the render callback okay so like suppose when you want to do changes using the third party libraries okay or want to synchronize with the dom updates or when performing complex scenarios so in such cases you can go and use this render callback to make sure that the things are executing after the rendering phase of the component okay but please make sure do not uh, excessively use this method as it can also affect the component performance okay just try to make use of other life cycle hooks and using the proper reactive properties of the component okay what are promises here so then and catch mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me the different uh, functions we have here in promises and when we exactly use this okay in promises we have then and catch methods. If you receive data, uh, if you receive any data from the Apex class, mm -hmm. the data will be stored in then uh, as a result. Otherwise, if you receive any error from the Apex class, it uh, in the catch method uh, uh, error will be stored in error variable. And uh, these will be then and catch method will be used in imperative method. Okay. What are custom events in the components? Custom events is nothing but if you want to fire let me give you an example mm -hmm. uh, parent component for sure we have to use custom event because uh, in lightning web cycle uh, the components we are unable to uh, send data directly initially we have to dispatch the event uh, in custom event only we have to send uh, in the custom event uh, there is one detail variable is there uh, through that detail variable uh, we are able to capture data in the parent component Okay. So, what type of data we use to pass in this detail parameter? Like objects. Okay. And list of uh, list of records, list of objects. So, anything we can pass, primitive, non-primitive, list of primitive, right? Yes. Okay. What are shadow DOM? Shadow DOM is nothing. A DOM. Shadow DOM is completely restricted type. DOM is complete a uh, global wise. Uh, DOM is uh, is all about a, uh, conversion of uh, HTML and CSS JavaScript uh, into uh, on a different format. Uh, let, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, when we are using the computer, uh, the, the computer to understand the our keywords uh, like uh, alphabets, numbers, uh, it will convert all the things into binary code. Mm -hmm. So same like that. Our components doesn't, uh, our platform doesn't understand any or any of our HTML code or JavaScript code, whatever it is. It will convert into the format that will, uh, the data entirely stored in DOM document object model. And, and if you apply any CSS styles uh, to that DOM, uh, it will, it will apply to entire application. But if you use a stamp, shadow DOM, it, it was completely restricted. Uh, issue uh, for each component, uh, you have to apply styles. It won't get reflected into another component. For each component, uh, the style it will be restricted. Yes. Okay. okay. How do we pass data from uh, this parent to child? Parent to child uh, directly by calling the child component into parent component, we are able to pass the data. Uh, like, uh, we have to initialize that uh, by using C, uh, C hyphen, uh, the child child component name. Mm -hmm. That's it. So in this child component, do we require help of any decorator? 
Creator, uh, yes, actually, if you are passing data from parent to child component, mm-hmm. in the child component, you have to uh, declare that uh, initially you are passing data, let's say, uh, from parent component, uh, there is an attribute like, uh, okay, let's say data, data keyword. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you are, uh, if you are, if you want to send data from parent to child, you, ha- you have to include that data keyword in child component. At the time, you have to decorate that with API. Then only you are able to receive data. Okay. Can you tell me the difference between PubSub model and this LMS? Actually, I don't know that much great knowledge on PubSub. Okay. Uh, but I know that it's a traditional method, which is, it is, it is from JavaScript itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but LMS, Lightning Message Service, is uh, introduced by Salesforce. Mm-hmm. That's what I know, the main difference. Uh, but the thing is, by using we are able to pass the data, which is not relatable components. If the, if, if the components doesn't have any relationships also, we are able to uh, pass the data from one component to another component by using uh, in the by using the LMS. Initially, we have to create uh, a message services uh, folder. Mm-hmm. In message services folder, we have to create an XML, XML file. In that XML file, there are different uh, mask, different types of uh, XML data available like master labels, uh, field names, uh, field descriptions, all the data available. And uh, coming to the component, we have to pass, we have to call that, we have to import the uh, message services into the component, both the components. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the, let's say uh, component A and uh, component B, we have to transfer data from component A to B. Uh, in the component A, you have to import uh, like uh, publish and uh, message context uh, by publishing the data uh, from A and uh, you are able to receive the data uh, in B by importing the subscribe and the message context in B component. Okay. Okay. Let's suppose we have a visual force page. Okay. And with this visual force page, I want to connect with LWC web component. Okay, or I want to include my web component in VF page. So, is this possible? If yes, then how? Yeah, this was possible for sure because this was possible. Mm-hmm. But uh, can, I, I don't have. A, can LMS idea. help us in communicating between VF pages and web components? Yes, it was possible. Okay. So we are able to send data to uh, VF components as well and R components as well. Yes. By using LMS. Yes. Okay. So can we include our web components in Aura components? Yes, we are able to. And Aura components in web? No, it's not possible. Okay. So is there any best practices to write web components? Web components. Yeah. Actually, the, the thing is, if you, uh, we, uh, the best practices means we have to uh, create a components for reusable purpose. Yes. The main thing is, at what, uh, if it is possible, we have to uh, count as small as possible. That is one best practice. I think. Mm-hmm. We have to, yeah, that, that, that's the thing. Okay, I mean is the reusable part. Okay, just we always try to make or write our code or create our components. If there there is a need, we can reuse them. Okay, reusable components. Yeah, okay. like a toast messages. Yes, okay. yes, yes, correct. The CSS part. Okay, so these are the things which are mainly required the reusing. Okay.